Hello everyone, welcome to the 12th part of my Gary's Mod Lewis tutorial series. Today we are going to be learning how to make a scoreboard. So to begin, what we're going to want to do is hook on to whenever the scoreboard key is pressed or the function is called for opening the scoreboard. And then we also want to hook on to whenever the scoreboard is going to be hidden. So to begin, what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to wiki.garysmod.com and I'm going to go ahead and search up scoreboard. You can see under hooks we have scoreboard hide and scoreboard show. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say hook.add. I'm going to hook onto scoreboard show. And then I'm going to give it a unique identifier. Uh, open scoreboard. And I'm going to go ahead and run a function. Then I'm going to go hook.add scoreboard hide. My add on hide scoreboard. I'm going to say function. And okay. So now we have these two hooks for going game. You see I press tab, it still shows the default Gary's mod scoreboard. So to <clears throat> hide that, all you have to do is type return false and scoreboard show. And so now I'm pressing tab right now and it is not opening. So to begin, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a local function. The local function is going to be called toggle scoreboard. The reason why it's called toggle scoreboard is because you're going to toggle it. And we're gonna pass in an argument, which is gonna be called toggle. So Toggle is going to be a Boolean value, and if it's set to true, we're going to show the scoreboard, and then if it's set to false, we're going to hide the scoreboard. So we're going to say if toggle, then else end. Okay, so in this portion of the if statement, this is where we will create our um, <clears throat> scoreboard, and then in this portion, this is where we will remove it. So whenever we do toggle scoreboard, I'm going to go ahead and Right, toggle scoreboard, and I'll say toggle scoreboard true. And then whenever we hide it, I'll say toggle scoreboard, and then I'll say false. So just real quick to make sure that's working, I'll say opening uh, scoreboard, and then otherwise we'll do uh, hiding scoreboard. Okay, and we'll save that. Go ahead and clear this, and then I'm gonna press tab a few times. You can see, oh excuse me, I'm gonna let me go ahead and do developer one. So I'm gonna, I just, I'm holding down tab. Now I'm gonna release it. Holding, releasing. So now you can see it's working. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and create a global variable. Now this is gonna be the variable that references the VGI element or the D frame of our scoreboard. So there's uh, we have a basic hierarchy of whenever you're creating um, uh, basically any menus. You're gonna have the D frame, which is going to be the parent of everything. This is going to be what everything is on top of. And then it's going to have children, which is going to be the the sub elements or the, the child's or the, sorry, the children that are going to be on top of that D frame. So to begin, I'm going to go ahead and establish a variable. That's just going to be my add on scoreboard equals VGI.create. So in here, we're going to do VGI.create. And the first argument is going to be the element type that we are going to pass in. And we're going to be creating a D frame. The second argument is the parent. In this case, we don't want to have a parent because this is going to be the very its own base. And so since this is the base, we don't really have a parent. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and actually store a variable. Um, now I'll store it right here, uh, which is going to be the reference to the screen width and screen height. So I'm just going to do SRWSRH equals the screen width and then the screen height. So whenever I create uh, any of my menus, I usually work with um, the resolution size that I'm currently on so it kind of scales neatly with uh, on all resolutions so to begin what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say my add-on scoreboard and I'm gonna go ahead and set the title for it um, and I'm just gonna say scoreboard and then I'm gonna do my add-on scoreboard uh, set size and then we'll do SCR width times 0.5 maybe and then SCR height times 0.6 and then I'm going to do my add-on scoreboard, and then I'm going to run the function center, which is going to center it based on the size that we gave it on our screen. And then we're going to say my add-on scoreboard, and then we're going to do something that says make pop up. So whenever you create a, a D frame, if you don't run make pop up, it's going to pop up, or sorry, it's going to draw on the screen, but it's not going to uh, request focus. And so we won't be using our mouse clicker, but if we do mouse uh, make pop up, it's going to request focus and uh, show our mouse clicker. So now I'm going to go ahead and just save this now, go in game, and now when I press tab, you can see the scoreboard exists, but it actually did not remove it. So we need to include that into our else statement here. I'm going to say, if is valid, we're just going to do an is valid check just in case it's not valid for whatever reason, then 
we're going to remove it just like that. So now when I press tab, there it is. I let go. There it is. Okay. So this is our scoreboard. It's not really that pretty. So how do we make it pretty? Uh, well, first we're actually going to change the width a little bit because it's a little too wide, maybe a little bit smaller. Yeah, that looks fine with me. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this title. The reason I want to get rid of this title is because I can't really style it whenever we draw the default title like this. And I'll show you an alternative way to do that. So I'm just going to go ahead and set it to an empty string. So now there is no title. Additionally, we don't need the close button anymore. Um, since um, we automatically remove it whenever we press tab. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, remove that. Show close button and we'll set this to false. And then additionally, right now it is draggable. So to make it so it's not draggable, what we're going to do is we're going to say my add on scoreboard and then we're going to say set draggable and then we're going to set that to false. Okay. So now you can see it can't be dragged anymore. The next portion, what we're going to do is we're going to override the paint function. So by default, the D frame has its own paint function that's drawing the gray portions of our panel here, but we're going to override that so we can do our own thing. So I'm just going to say dot paint. My, uh, my add-on scoreboard dot paint equals function. So I'm basically overriding this dot paint uh, variable, which holds the function that uh, draws everything. We're gonna override that to whatever we put in here. So the first reference, uh, or sorry, the first argument is going to be me, or this can actually be self. Self will be the reference of the object uh, that is being painted. So if I ever reference self in this case, it's going to reference my add-on scoreboard. And then the second argument is going to be the width and then the third argument is going to be the height, which is the width of the panel and then the height of the panel. So now if I go ahead and save this, because I'm pressing tab right now, you can see that the mouse is popping up, but nothing is happening. So to make something happen, what we're going to do is we're going to look back to our HUD code and we're going to actually do something similar. So I'm going to do surface dot set draw color. I'm going to go ahead for a transparent black. So I'm going to do zero, zero, zero to 55, not 255, sorry, 200. So it can be somewhat transparent. And we're gonna do surface dot draw rect, and then we'll do zero zero with height. So zero is the x position. Uh, this zero right here is the y position. So everything starts from the top left corner, and then we're gonna draw out to the right by the width, and then draw down by the height. So if I go ahead and save this now, you see we have this nice little dark panel here. Okay, next we're gonna to wanna to add in some text. So to do that, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and create a font, but I kind of forgot to do that. So I'm gonna go into our wiki, and I'm gonna look up surface dot create font. Okay, so now in here we are going to do surface.create font, which is going to be the font name and then the font data. And so you can see a list of all the data that can be stored for the font. Um, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this entire thing, I'm going to copy it, and then I'm going to paste it. Actually, I'll paste it up here. And then I'm going to get rid of all this extra information that I don't really need. That's good with me. Good with me. I'm going to change the font name, the font itself. Like if you have like roboto.ttf or OTF. I, I don't know the extensions. I'm sorry, but uh, I'm pretty sure there's a default font that's called Roboto that you can use. And then here, this is going to be the name of, or sorry, the reference to all this data here. So I'm going to go ahead and just say uh, my add on SB underscore, and then we'll say 14. And then that will go ahead and create a font that has a size 14, which is the font Roboto. But whenever we want to reference it, instead of saying Roboto, we can just say my add on underscore SB underscore 14. Next, I'm going to draw some text, and so to do that, you look up draw.simpleText, and then I know that the first argument is the text, the second argument is the font, the third is the x position, the fourth is the y, fifth is the color, and then the six and seven are the x alignment and y alignment. So to begin, I'm going to do draw.simpleText, and then I'm just going to say uh, scoreboard, and then for the font, we're going to use that font that we created up there. And then for the X position, I'm going to divide the width by two. So it's in the center. And then I'm going to do height times 0 0.05. So 5% down from the top of the scoreboard. I'm going to do color underscore white, which is going to set it to white. I can also do something like this where I can just say 255, 255, 255. But uh, by default, there's a variable called color underscore white, which just references the color white. So you can just do that. And then we're going to do text align. And then we can do top, we can do bottom, we can do left, we can do right, but I'm going to do center. Um, and now I'm going to go ahead and save that. So hopefully this works out. You can see now we have scoreboard. I'm going to go ahead and change this to maybe 1% and okay, maybe 2%. There we go. That looks a little bit better. Now what we're going to do is we're going to have to create some form of loop. Yes, maybe. Yes, we're going to create a loop. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to create a panel for every single player. 
Um, to begin, I'm actually going to create this without the loop and then we'll add the loop into it um, to make it work for every single player that's uh, on, in our server. So real quick, I don't believe there's anyone on the server, so I'm just going to go ahead and add in some bots. So we got about three bots in there. We're going to make them show up on the scoreboard in one second. First, we're going to create the, uh, I guess our template for our uh, player panel that's going to pop up. So I'm going to say local player panel equals vgui.create and then this time I'm going to go ahead and create a D panel. So essentially this is kind of similar to a D frame except this is a child. It's, it's specifically meant to be a child while D frame is meant to be the parent of all. Um, now for the second argument we didn't set one for our D frame but for our player panel we're going to go ahead and set uh, a parent and our parent in this case is going to be my add-on scoreboard and so now whenever we reference um, like uh, if I was to make a paint function and I was to reference zero zero um, sorry I, I let me explain this a little bit better whenever you're referencing positions it's always relative to the parent so if you're setting a position for example in our D frame to uh, 100 100 which would be 100 on the X 100 Y it'd be 100 uh, on the X and 100 on the Y for our entire screen resolution. But now since our D panel is now a child of our D frame, if we were to set our position of the D panel to 100, 100, it's no longer 100, 100 up here. It's 100, 100 depending on the D frames position and size. So just something to keep in mind. Uh, we don't really have to set a title or anything like that. We just have to set position and size. So I'm gonna go ahead and set the position to uh, zero, and then I'm actually going to do my add-on scoreboard for now, just my add-on scoreboard get tall. And I'm going to keep in mind this 2% that I set here, and I don't want this to overlap, so I'm going to go ahead and just do 0 0.04, so there's a 2% difference between the player panel position and the text that is being drawn. So hopefully that'll work out. Then we'll go ahead and do player panel uh, set size, and then we'll do uh, my add-on scoreboard, and we'll do get wide. And then now this is going to be the height. And if I think about this, if I set this to about 10% um, of the add-ons or my add-on scoreboard's height, I can fit about 10 players on the panel without having to scroll. So I think that's about fine. Um, actually, no, we'll do 5%. And then uh, scoreboard, excuse me, lowercase, get tall times 0 0.05, okay? Now I'm going to go ahead and save this and open up the scoreboard. Now you can see that little panel right here. This is how it's going to draw out a player. So to begin, I'm going to go ahead and give it some styling. And I'm just going to say player panel dot paint equals function. And then we'll do self uh, with height. And then we'll do the same thing. Just go ahead and draw a uh, somewhat transparent black rectangle. First tab, you can see there's our panel. It is now no longer the default. And then I'm just going to do draw that simple text. And then I'm going to put this in the center. Uh, and I'm just going to do local player name for now. And then <clears throat> we'll do the same font as our title. Just keep things simple. We'll do width divided by two and then height divided by two. So right now we're just going to draw the name. We don't really want any information extra information we can get that or you guys can add that on your own later but for now we're just going to do names um, and then uh, text align center text align center so now go ahead and save it next to csi dam sick now this works but we have a bunch of bots on our server and they're not really showing up so that's no fun so to make them show up what we're going to do is we're going to take the code that we just writ wrote and we're going to put it inside a loop and so we're going to say 4k in pairs and then now we're going to pass in a table which is going to be the table that we're going to loop over and we're going to pass in something called player.get all which holds all the entities uh, that are players so if i do player.get all this is going to execute based on how many players are in this loop so now if i go ahead and i save this you see this is a lot darker and the reason why it's a lot darker is because it probably got called three to four times so what we need to do is we need to offset our a, a y position variable variable based on how many times this is called so i'm going to go ahead and create a y um a y pos variable i'm going to set this to uh this right here for our initial value so now if i go ahead and put y pos in there and i save it nothing has changed okay now at the end, after we create this player panel and we're getting ready to go on to the next uh, iteration of the loop, we're gonna go ahead and say y pos equals y pos. So we're gonna get the current value of the y position. And then we're gonna add uh, the player panel's height 
Uh, so get tall, and then we're just going to multiply that by 1.1. So basically what this is going to do, it's going to take this height, and we're just going to increase it by 10% whenever we multiply it by 1.1. So there's a little bit of spacing in between each panel. So now we're going to go ahead and save it. Now when I open this, now you can see we get CSI Dan, CSI Dan, CSI Dan, CSI Dan. That's cool. Now, what we need to do is uh, we're going to go ahead and say, instead of local player name, this little V right here, which represents the player of the current iteration, we're going to do V name. So now when I save it, I can see CSI Dan bot 01, bot 02, bot 03. Another thing to keep in mind, if a player disconnects, uh, they, their, um, their name might not exist anymore. So something that we could do just in case to um, have this work out okay, we could say local name equals V name. And so we could store it in a variable. So it's not constantly looking up the value. It'll instead look up the value which was stored here, which isn't going to update every single frame. So now whenever we save it, we get the same results. But if someone disconnects, that might solve our problem. Another thing that we could do is we could also just do an is valid check and we say if is valid V just to ensure that the player is valid, then we'll go ahead and draw our uh, player information on there. And you can see it still works because all these players are valid. Uh, that's just something to keep in mind. You want to do some is valid checks here and there. Um, so yeah, that's one quick thing that we could do. Also, uh, just real quick, I guess, why not? We can add in the ping. So we could do v ping, and then we could go ahead and concatenate that. And we could say um, something like this, ping, and then we'll do ping. And now you can see we get their ping and we could go ahead and actually create multiple draw that simple text and position these correctly and make it very beautiful. But that's all up for you guys. Uh, so yeah, that's a very basic introduction into uh, VGI elements and creating a scoreboard. Hopefully this makes sense. I hope you guys understood. Uh, just real quick, I just want to say if you guys don't understand what is going on, um, please don't feel discouraged and please don't give up. Uh, it's taken me many, many years and I failed several times so much that I've actually want to quit and never touch coding ever again. Um, but after so long of just staying dedicated to it, I finally understood it. And this is a little bit more of a complex subject. Um, I kind of dove into this really fast. So I'm going to kind of break this down a little bit more in some different parts later on. But this is something that I really want to push out um, based on requests. So as always, guys, uh, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you have any comments, comment down below and uh, take care.